Hey guys, Gavone here. And today I'm going to bring a video about action bars. Uh, because I've been requested by a few clan mates to sort of make a video on action bars. Now, I've tried to make this video so many times before, and it's always been long or like overly complicated. So I'm going to try and keep this simple. Now, first of all, you'll notice I have three action bars here. Um, now I will tell, I will quickly show you how to do that. So, in your gameplay settings, go to action bar settings. Let's see, I, I can't move the window. Um, let me uh, move that out of the way. Okay, so you you can uh, see these. Um, so effectively. Uh, these are how you sort of set the secondary and, th and tertiary action bars and fourth and fifth if you want those on screen uh, so that's sort of what I have uh, down here now my I, you probably won't be able to see my cursor that much uh, on this video try and sort of avoid that problem now the first thing I'm going to cover um, I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of explain different abilities at the end, like different abilities that you might not recognise on here. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna cover is the revolution bar. Now the revolution section of your bar is going to be this yellow bit here. The first nine abilities in your bar. Now, that is the base of your DPS. That is what you're going to be using for basics, and that's what you're going to be using to build Adrenaline. Now, Adrenaline is extremely important because Thresholds and Ultimates are your biggest damage dealers. Now, your basics will make a big difference as well, but not so much in raw damage that they do, but mostly in the amount of Adrenaline they they produce. Now, I have a setup which has some of my shorter cooldowns first, so those get used more more frequently. But I've like also got higher damage abilities near the front as well. Uh, so this is sort of specific to everyone, and this can change depending on the boss. For example, uh, you don't want to have uh, binding shot on your revolution section if you go to Yakamura um, and if you do magic you're going to you're going to want to have uh, this ability impact first on your bar if you do living wyverns so those are some obscure uh, examples so now the key to this is you want your basic abilities to never never sort of be on hold as it were so you always want those abilities to be used uh, constantly you don't want any gaps so I believe the wiki has a calculator that allows you to calculate whether there's going to be gaps in the rotation so basically put enough abilities on there so that there's no gaps uh, now secondly on my bar I have a bunch of uh, a bunch of thresholds, and um, like all of this is the same for every style. Like this is my magic bar; these are like my basics. Um, and then for my, my two-handed melee, exactly the same thing. And then for dual wield melee, the same. So you're gonna want to have thresholds available as well. Now, for range, these your best thresholds for range are going to be Snapshot, uh, first of all, then Rapid Fire. Now, some people like might argue about the next thresholds, but those two are basically the big ones. Um, now, Tendril abilities for each style can do a lot of damage, but they're very risky because they, they cause you to take a lot of damage whilst using those abilities as well. These are thresholds as well. Um, and the tendril abilities can be gotten through the dig quest, uh, the dig site quest. Now, 
the thing with these tender abilities is you will take a lot of damage so do not use these on a boss you're new to wait until you're sort of more experienced doing that boss but yeah those can those can be like the hardest hitting thresholds so like quickly if anyone doesn't know what a threshold is a threshold is basically an ability uh, which requires 50 adrenaline so like this thing here uh, that signifies it's a threshold and it will it will drain your adrenaline not 50% it will drain it like 10-15% I don't know the exact number off the top of my head um, so you're going to be using these all the time then the next step up is going to be your ultimate abilities these cost a hundred adrenaline require you to have hundred adrenaline and these are really really big abilities so the only one I actually use um, just with range I, there's one other I use for all three styles which I will get onto that later on so the only one I really use for range is death swiftness now as you can see from the actually you probably can't see fully from the tooltip uh, it basically puts an AoE on the ground uh, actually let's see if I can build some adrenaline to show you it basically puts an AoE on the ground and if you're standing in the AoE you get increased range damage so it's a uh, and it lasts for about 30 seconds but the problem is you have to be in the AoE so it can be a bit of a pain sometimes if you're on a boss where you have to move a lot so bear that in mind I'm uh, still trying to build the adrenaline enough now magic has the same equivalent ability uh, called sunshine Right now this is going to be death swiftness you can see it's there and I've got a buff here which tells you how long it's going to last so I do more damage whilst I'm in it uh, it's got quite a large radius as you can see but if I take one more step here I'm going to be out of the radius uh, so yeah this lasts for about 30 seconds um, increase your damage substantially now usually with these abilities like um, Death Swiftness, Sunshine and Berserk you want to fit as many thresholds in with those as possible so quickly before I move on to the uh, second row um, I'm also going to mention the mage thresholds so now like the mage thresholds can be sort of argued on which is the best generally speaking the ones people use most are wild magic and asphyxiate and uh, wild magic can be a bit RNG and asphyxiate can miss a lot <laughs> but yeah those are basically your go-to your go-to major thresholds sometimes you might want to use steep impact if you've like if you still have adrenaline and you've got the others in cooldown and of course there is tendrils but I wouldn't recommend using magic tendrils now magic has some options in terms of ultimates so you've got the normal sun sunshine you've also got metamorphosis uh, which is effectively a mobile sunshine but it only lasts 15 seconds now the only plus I actually use this is on hell we're hard mode because you're always going to be moving on hell we're hard mode and metamorphosis is perfect for if you're on the move because it removes the weakness of having to stay still with sunshine um, now I also have a tsunami which is a massive AoE I believe range has something similar and um, there's also another mage uh, ultimate uh, which is called Omni Power, and that's pretty strong. Omni Power uh, that can be sort of like a backup. Now, Sunshine and Death Swiftness, I've not mentioned this yet, but these are obtainable through a quest called The World's Wakes. The World Wakes, 
uh, it doesn't have any requirements to do that quest. So it's worth having a look. You get a bunch of diff you get a bunch of good new abilities, uh, which are going to be helpful in pretty much everywhere, really. Uh, so it's definitely worth um, it's definitely worth doing that quest, especially as it has no requirements to get the actual abilities themselves. Um, then on to melee. Now, it's also sometimes a good idea to keybind changing your action bar uh, from next to fur next and previous. Uh, the reason for this is that sometimes you might be fighting something that's tribrid, like Fight Killing. And I'm actually going to release the Fight King guide soon, so I'll be sort of including bits from here on to there. So, for dual wield, um, for two-hand uh, melee, now melee sort of has a different setup for dual wield and for two-hander. Uh, that's because you've got the attack and the strength book, so it's sort of got double the abilities. So the thresholds I usually use um, with melee is uh, hurricane, earthquake, and assault. I don't use any more than that. For ultimates, uh, berserk is your go-to. That is. That's effectively similar to like a sunshine, except there's no AoE, you don't have to uh, stand still. But you also take increased damage during that duration, so be careful with that. Pulverize is a good one, because that reduces the damage dealt to you. And um, Meteor Strike is an AoE. And lastly, for, for um, dual wield, I don't actually use dual world, but the only, the main reason you'd want to use dual world is destroy, which is a threshold. There's also assault, also slaughter for any style of of melee, um, and then of course for ultimates you got berserk. I often use massacre as well. Sometimes I use frenzy, but not that often. Now the final ultimate I use in every style is Onslaught. Now Onslaught you can get this from the Masca Beatty Codex. Effectively you start channeling and it drains your adrenaline sort of like rapidly. Uh, it doesn't cost you a hundred adrenaline when you use it. It doesn't cost you any adrenaline when you press it. But you do have to have a hundred adrenaline first. And basically, they will sort of start draining your adrenaline, and then it will start draining your health. Um, this goes on until you decide to do something else, like uh, like eat or move, or interrupt it. Note that press switching does not interrupt it, so that's good. And basically, every time you take damage, your target takes damage. Well, I, no, let me explain that. Better. Every time you lose adrenaline or take damage from this severity, directly from this severity, your target will take a lot of damage as well. And it will ramp up and increase and increase and increase the longer you have it active. So that's a very good thing uh, to use. Now I'm going to also mention Storm Shards and Shatter. Actually I'm not. Don't use these unless you're at Rax. Uh, that's the only place I ever use these. Okay, so now you might be thinking, okay, so why do you have three action bars? Now, the reason for this is I want as much stuff keybound as possible. Now, note my basic abilities, I do not have keybound, because I don't need to have those keybound. Those are used by the game for me. Sometimes I might manually use these, I might click these, but I do not need these keybound. My thresholds and ultimates, um, I keybind my most common ones. A sort of more risky one, I won't keybind, just as, like... I, ha I have to have the last word on whether I'm using that, and my hands have to not fuck up. Um, so, I want as many keybinds on important stuff as possible. I want, en I want 
everything on the screen that I might ever use in a boss or in a slayer task. And I don't want to have to keep looking through my book for these, don't want to keep looking through my prayers. So I have them all on screen at once. I also have a... Actually, I sort of go through this in order. Um, why I might have these. Now, the first two... Like, the first one is uh, keybinds to switch my shield. And... Um, I, I I just used it a bit too quick that I didn't show it properly. So, yeah, I just press Shift 1 and I switch my shield. I do have to click my weapon back in my bag, but that's not that's not an issue because I need the shield equipped quickly. Not I don't really need the weapon equipped as quickly. Now, the second ability is right next to the shield. Now, this has to be right next to the shield for this to work. And um, it's resonance, which um, this is an extremely important skill when it comes to bossing. And the reason for this is that you will heal off the next damage, uh, next damage hit that you take, and you don't take damage from it. Like so, you get healed instead of taking damage. Now, this is particularly good at Goblin Dungeon Two and everything above. Now. A good trick I do with this, because I have these key bound, I basically roll my finger over one and two, and then effectively in one motion I equip my shield and hit resonance, and that's that's how I do it basically. Uh, so you, that's effectively how you really quickly resonance. And I have to have those key bound, key bound because those are so important in, in high level bossing. Um, I'll do that one more time. So soft core down. So I just roll over both of them with my hand, with my finger, and whilst holding shift. Uh, so that's like the key bound. So. Uh, next I've got a couple of tanking abilities. I only use these when tanking, but I do need tanking stuff on my on my bars for when I do tank. Uh, next is devotion. Most important ability in the game, in my opinion. Your protect prayers are 100% effective. That's it. That's all you really need to know. So, yeah, that's, um, that's super important. If there's going to be a huge bunch of damage you're about to take and you know about it, hit Devotion before and you take no damage from it. Um, debilitate, I've also gone next to that now. Debilitate reduces the damage that you take. And... I was just dealt to you. I thought Debilitate reduced the damage they dealt to anyone. Um, but yeah, Debertate is always a good thing to use to, to stay alive. I won't mention Bound Strike because honestly I could do an entire other video on that ability. Um, I don't recommend you ever use it. It's very, very situational and only if you're using melee. And it's very risky. The Ice Asylum, I don't have that key bound because I honestly don't need to. I use this during off periods when I'm group bossing. Then I've got Onslaught, Storm Charge and Shatter because I don't have... Well, I use these in all three abilities, so I don't really have room to put them on my main bar. So, they're there whichever style I'm using, for instance. So then I've got my Tier 95 uh, Curses and... These are here so that I don't have to keep going through my prayer book. Although I could do that. <laughs> but that's why these are here. In my last bar, I've got key bound on 1 and 2. Now, it's quite important that these two are key bound and run next to each other. Got protect from range, protect from magic. The most frequent prayer switch in the game is from range to magic to range to magic, etc. Um, now, sometimes, like, if the boss would require three prayers, I would have a third prayer here instead of provoke. I have these two here to switch into that, into those slots. 
So, for instance, at Greg, I actually press switch from source split to protect from range. So, when I do that, I simply do that before the fight, and it's set up. So, yeah, I've got provoked there, uh, sometimes for when I'm bossing. Now, surgeon escape are really useful as well, and good to have on the bar. Uh, like, they can come in clutch at several places. For instance, racks when avoiding the green spiders. Um, freedom and anticipation, these are absolutely important. You have to have these on your bar when you're bossing, really. Um, they they will avoid so many mechanics, bleeds, and everything. They will block everything. <laughs> well, bleeds and stuns. Uh, anticipation also has a built-in uh, damage reduction. So... Those are key bound because, I, effectively, I might I might often be wanting to move, and the only way I can move is using the mouse. I can't click abilities or click food in my inventory if I'm if I'm basically clicking around and moving. Um, I'm gonna skip over the the holy of low prayer pot and uh, punishment pot because those are just there for usefulness for being on the bar. But following on to the moving whilst eating thing, that's why I have freedom, anticipation, uh, the prayer switches, <coughs> and even like even like devotion and uh, and resonance. That's why I have them keybound on the bar, and, and every like this is why I have them keybound because I don't want to click something whilst I'm having to click to move. So I just use a keybind whilst moving. So I'm prop pr praying, prayer switching whilst moving around. Now this is also why I have uh, food and brews on my bar. So much easier just keybind to eat rather than just spam click in your inventory. Because if you're spamming clicking in your inventory and you're having to move from mechanics, you're trying to do two things at once, which you can't do. If you've got keybound, you only have to be clicking one thing whilst you're you're pressing on the other. Um, same for Bruce. So yeah, that's that's sort of my um. I think I've covered most things. <coughs> now, a few of the abilities you might not recognize. Okay, so, first of all, Corruption Shot and Corruption Blast. Um, these are, frankly, amazing abilities. You basically... You basically hit one target with it. It's a dot. It will... With each tick, it will spread to everything nearby, and it will not pull aggro on them. These these are very good abilities. These two, along with onslaught, storm shards, and shatter, come from the Mascab ability codex. <coughs> the tendril abilities come from the dig site quest. Um, sacrifice, which is a healing ability, also also does damage. Sacrifice and devotion both come from God War Dungeon One mobs, specifically Armadillo and Bandos. You can get them off bosses as well. They can be a bit of a long grind to get granted. Then uh, World's Wake stuff, um, Band Strike, Asylum. Uh, Death Swiftness and Sunshine, as are from the World Wake World Wake's quest. And then the last thing that I've not mentioned is uh, Tusker's Wrath. Now, you get this from a um, from a mini game called uh, Tusker Comes, and it's basically where you have to do. Um, I think it's uh, well, it's several different skills. Um, they reduce the requirements, like they reduce the amount of times you have to do that mini game to get this ability now. So that's really good. Now, as you can see from the tooltip there, this basically does a <coughs> hundred times your slayer level as damage. 
So if you've got 99 slayer, that's 9,900 damage. It can crit, and it can hit up to 12,000 when it crits. Now, th like this is the slayer section of the ability. Like if you, this only works if you're doing on a slam up. And then it goes on a 120 second cooldown if you use on a slam up. Because honestly, that's a big hit. That can one shot quite a lot of slam minions. If you are not on task for that particular mob that you're attacking, it turns into another basic ability that does 110% damage and only has a 15 second cooldown. Which actually makes it, it makes it better than the other basic abilities for ranged and magic. For melee, the other basic abilities are sort of still a bit better. But yeah, this is a really good thing to have in most rotations, a special task. Same with sacrifice since it heals you. But yeah, that's about it. Uh, hopefully I've explained why I have three action bars there. And why you might want to have three action bars. Hopefully I've explained the s what styles use what abilities. And um, yeah. Got any questions? PM me in game. Or leave a comment. I did do this all in one take. And in live commentary as well. So yeah. It might be a bit rambly. So yeah, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys later.